Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Gabe Hamda, and I'm very happy to be here. And what I want to talk to you about today is about in a job hunt, the end-to-end -end process. And I want you to think of the, the last job you were offered and what it is that helped you get that job. And I'll tell you mine. I think when, when I applied for the last job that I kept for 10 years, in the initial contact, the lady who was hiring was fascinated by me, by my name. Gabriel Yesu, she thought that was exotic. And also where I got my degree. So I think the hiring process was sealed when she first called me, okay? So um, this is to tell you that there is so much stake in interviews and resumes, and I need to tell you there is more to a job offer than just interviews and resumes. So there is an end-to-end -end process, and I want to just share with you eight of them. Uh, Self-assessment, kind of knowing who you are, assessing the job market, preparing your job hunt arsenal or the resources or tools, job scouring, face-to-face -face with the potential employer, the eternal waiting period, rejections, and offers. So I just want to give you kind of like a high-level walkthrough of these uh, processes. Following my presentation, our experts will be covering each one of the steps. There will be an expert who will talk about the self-assessment, another expert who will talk about other processes. So I'll just give you the high-level walkthrough. Okay? Now, let's begin with the self-assessment. I just want to point three things. One is, for you to be able to fully market yourself, knowing yourself really helps you. Otherwise, you'll be double-minded. Also, the more you know what you want, people will be in a position to help you. If, if you don't know what you want, people cannot help you. Also, you are here to face the world. You, you have so many rejections and all kinds of ups and downs for you to be able to face the world. You better be prepared knowing what you really want. That's step one, self-assessment. The second one is assessing the job market. What I would say in assessing the job market is to really master the industry and the organizations you are pursuing. Actually, I'll, I'll go further have an emotional connection with the industry and the organizations you are going after. What does that mean? Having an emotional connection is to read upon them, know about them, know examples, the good, the bad, so that when you are out there, you are there solving problems and minimizing the waiting time you have. The third step is uh, preparing your job hunting arsenal. As I said earlier, most people think only resumes and interviews are your key to a job offer. I'm here to say there is more to it. Of course, you need your resumes to be you know, well prepared. Of course, you want your cover letter to be well prepared. On top of that, how about you? You are the major arsenal. Your body language, your, your state of health, how you feel about yourself, your demeanor. So you got to work more on yourself rather than just the resumes and the, the cover letter. Also. Your voice message, you know, when, when they call back for you, what kind of message is there for you? Is that, does that reflect what you are after? Does that really reflect, is that the impression you want them to have about you? As well as in your, your email address, your email address may have the wrong message in it. So you need to make sure the email address that you have, the email account, is very reflective of what you are after. The next step is uh, job scouting. That is where you create leads. Okay, who is out there who is likely to talk to me? Who am I likely to talk to them? There may be places you don't want to work. So you don't want to talk, you know, you don't want to spend an hour of your interview time with a place where you don't want to work. So you're going to get a feel for an environment. There are two types of leads, okay? One is a direct lead. A, a person may be a potential, you know, employer. That may be one person. And then there are gatekeepers. There may be people who have access to people who make decisions. So you need to identify uh, in kind of priority order, people who are likely to be your leads that you can pursue them. In doing that, uh, you also need to kind of fine tune your messages as you talk to them, you know, like as you have chit chats and networking opportunities. Fine tune your message. What message that resonates with them? What messages don't get through? You want to kind of test those messages. And also, from your kind of these minimal or little encounters, you want to learn from them so that you can you know, get, prepare your final face-to-face -face meeting with the client. Which leads me to the next step, which is face-to-face -face with the potential employer, the potential hiring manager. 
Now, there are a couple of things I like for you to think about. One is, rehearse. You may be the best and the baddest person to walk on earth. However, there are times when you walk in a scenario that we don't do well. So the way to avoid that is to rehearse. That rehearsal may be in front of a mirror, the best. Some people think the mirror is a mirror is a mirror, but I bet you it is the best way for you to stand in front of a mirror. Also, with the, your trusted uh, friend, family member, get some feedback on how you come across, okay? As part of your preparation, I also like for you to anticipate questions. What kind of questions are you likely to be asked? There may be a gap in your employment. There was a, maybe there was a time when you didn't have exactly the best relationship. How are you gonna answer that to your advantage? Also preparing your own questions to the employer. Sometimes those may be the ones that get you in. So those are a couple of things, a few things I'd like for you to think about as you prepare your face-to-face -face encounter with the employer. Now, then after your face-to-face uh, -face encounter, then there is that eternal waiting period that one of our experts would be dealing with in detail. I'll just cover some of the high points. One is to, to gauge your timing of follow-up. The employment between when you interview to when decision is made may take six months. It may take a month. It may be a week. So you gotta have a feel for that Sometimes they can tell you. Sometimes they may not tell you. Get a feel for how often you want to follow up with them. I also say have a mix of channels of communication doing the follow up with them. It may be an email. It may be a phone call. At times, if it's appropriate, it may be a walk in. What do you think of that? It may be just walk in sometimes, shake hands, maybe you bring something along, maybe chocolate, maybe some <laughs> bagel, something like that. You know, just to kind of break the ice so that they get a feel for the kind of person you are. Now, in this period, there are times when the employer may not be responsive. They may not answer your phone call. They may not uh, respond to your email. Mm -hmm. Stuff. It is very easy to assume it has something to do with you. It is very easy to assume they didn't like you. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to tell you, don't assume it's you. Assume, assume the best, okay? Assume they are busy. Assume they have other priorities. It makes it easy for you and you out in this period, okay? Now, and one of the outcomes of your waiting period may be a rejection letter. Ladies and gentlemen, are all rejections bad? I remember the last job I had, it began with a rejection, then it turned into an offer, okay? There may be other opportunities. If you, you know, if they have to choose one person and the person they picked may have all the 10 qualifications, you only had eight of them, there may be another spot that very fitted. So I would say don't burn your bridges because of a rejection. One of our experts would go deep into that with our own theory about it. Okay? Final, it could be a job offer, an outcome of your uh, your whole song and dance maybe a job offer. Well, all job offers may not be to your liking. What do you do when you don't when you don't like the pay? You don't like the environment but they like you maybe they like you more than you like them. What do you do? I would say when that happens, do it with class, do it with consideration. Part of the offer is negotiating per benefits and pay and other working arrangements. When you do that, especially when, when you think they are all over you, when, they, when you think they like you, don't be unreasonable. Be reasonable in your pay, in your compensation, other working arrangements. Let's say you want to have a month off, okay, before you begin. That may be reasonable, but asking six months, you're pushing too hard. So, you know, be considerate, be gentle in, in dealing with them. Now, uh, in closing, ladies and gentlemen, I wanna say in conclusion that getting a job offer is more than just interviews and resumes. It takes eight steps. One is self-assessment, knowing who you are. Then assessing the job market. Be connected emotionally with the job market. Prepare, uh, be prepared, uh, Prepare all your arsenals, including yourself. Do job scouting, identify your leads. Rehearse for your face-to-face. -face. During your, uh, your waiting period, assume the best. When it is rejection, don't burn your bridges. If it's a job offer, be gentle and be considerate. Ladies and gentlemen, they will follow detailed presentations by our experts who will give you nuts and bolts on each one of these I hope you go out and get the job you want. God bless you. Thank you very much.